Ladies, here's some behind the scenes thyroid stuff that most docs hope you'll never learn. All right. So the first thing you need to understand about optimizing thyroid function and getting your metabolism back on track is this. Most doctors use one marker and one marker only to evaluate thyroid function, and that's the TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, which isn't even a thyroid hormone, but I'm going to leave that there for another day. Now, point is one marker. Now, here's why this is important to you. There are 12 markers that make up a complete thyroid panel. And if you don't evaluate all 12, you have no shot at optimizing your thyroid function. So let me show you. Also, let me share another little nugget that'll explain why you still can't lose weight, increase your energy, clear your brain fog, stabilize your moods. There are over 20 different mechanisms that cause the thyroid to function suboptimally. So take a guess at how many most docs look at. All right, one. Now I'm gonna walk you through what it should sound like when you're getting a lab reading from your doctor and also show you some of the many different things that are almost certainly being missed if you continue to suffer with frustrating symptoms. All right, so I'm gonna walk you through this as if you were a patient and these were your labs. I want you to see how many things are likely being missed and I want you to hear what it should sound like when you're working with someone who's taking the time to get down to the root cause. First of all, I think it's important to note that there's loads of labs here that we always look at and I'm not gonna go through all of those labs for time's sake, but we're gonna really focus on the thyroid. All right, so the first thing we wanna look at is the TSH. Now this is important because this is the most common marker that almost every doctor runs when they're evaluating the thyroid. And the TSH for this particular patient is 3.15. Now when it's in the yellow, it means it's outside of the functional range. Now this is the laboratory range and the laboratory range is 0.4 to 4.5. Now you'll notice that this is a gigantic range, right? Like this is really big. Now, if you fall outside of that range below or above, that's when they diagnose disease and give you a medication. But there is a huge range in between there where maybe you're not functioning optimally and you have all of these symptoms, but it's not bad enough to be diagnosed. So if we look here, there's an optimal range one to three. And you can see that she's falling outside of that optimal range. She's at 3.15. So this means that her thyroid is trying to work really hard just to keep these thyroid hormones where they are. All right, so it tells us that yes, she has a problem, but we need to figure out what is the problem. Now, as we scroll down, probably the two most important markers in this thyroid panel are the thyroid peroxidase antibodies and the thyroglobulin antibodies. So the thyroid peroxidase antibodies should be less than 34, and she's at 152. And the thyroglobulin antibodies should be less than 0.9, and she's at 2,175. This means that the immune system is creating antibodies that will go and tag her thyroid tissue for destruction. So essentially, her thyroid is being destroyed by the immune system. That's why she has low thyroid. So she is dealing more with an immune condition more than she's dealing with a thyroid condition, or at least that's the primary issue. So I could spend hours talking about how we work with the immune system and create balance in the body and find all the underlying triggers. But for this video's sake, we're gonna keep evaluating her thyroid. But we know that the immune system is essentially destroying her thyroid tissue. That's ultimately why she has thyroid issues in the first place. Now, if we look at T4, now the way that the thyroid works, the thyroid mostly makes T4 hormone and it makes a little bit of T3. Now, the body has to convert that T4 into T3, and T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone. This is how your body regulates your metabolism, is it turns up or turns down how much T4 it converts into T3. Now, when we look at her T4, her T4 looks good. It's at 11.7. It's actually on the high end of the range, and her free T4, which is 1.52, is a little bit above the lab range. So she definitely doesn't have low T4 hormone. But let's see what else could be going on. So when we look at T3, we see that her T3, free and total, are both functionally low. So her body is slowing down her metabolism, and it's not converting T4 into T3 as efficiently as it should. Now, another clue to this, if we look at this reverse T3, Reverse T3 tells us, you know, it's it kind of tells us what's happening. So reverse T3 is like a breaker switch, right? It is like an escape hatch. So if the body has a lot of T4, but it is trying to slow down your metabolism or the metabolic rate, it's going to convert the excess T4 into reverse T3 so that you can get rid of it. All right, it's kind of like the wastebasket. It just converts it into T3 so that you can get rid of it. And so that, that's the way that it helps to maintain T3 levels or maintain a certain metabolic rate. Now, 
So we can see here that she's under converting. She's under converting T4 to T3. But a deeper question is why is she under converting T4 to T3? Now, there could be many reasons. It could be that you don't have the vitamins and nutrients and enzymes that you need to convert T4 to T3. It could be that you have some issues with the liver. Now, about 70% of the time, T4 is converted into T3 in the liver. And 20% of the time, it's converted in the gut. And 10% of the time in other parts of the body. So you could have a liver issue. It doesn't mean you have liver disease. It means just a liver imbalance. It could mean that you have some gut issues. It could also mean that you are under methylating, which means you're not clearing out inflammation very well. It could mean that you need help with detoxification. It could mean that you have a blood sugar issue. It could mean that you have low antioxidant levels. All of those things can cause you to underconvert T4 to T3. And then that can also cause your reverse T3 to go up. So that's why it's really important to dig in here to really understand what's going on with the thyroid metabolism and what's going on with the thyroid in order to actually resolve your symptoms. Now, the point is, is also this, the thyroid doesn't work by itself. The thyroid is within a system and there's systems upon systems that are all working together. And so we can, we have to really stop compartmentalizing the body and thinking that everything works separately because everything works in tandem. Everything works together. That's why if you have a liver issue or a blood sugar issue or detoxification issues or all of these other things, they can impact your thyroid physiology. It's not as simple as take this medication and everything's going to be amazing. You got to get down to the root cause of why your body is functioning the way it's functioning and why you have this symptoms that you have. Once you do that, you start to create resolution in the body. Now, if this makes sense, or at least you can see that there are some stones that have been left unturned and you want to go deeper with me, I'd like to invite you to the three-day Thyroid Transformation Masterclass. It's a virtual event and right now I'm allowing for free registration, so just click below to grab your spot.